Hello guys, this is Nick Pino. I'm the author of this book, The non tinfoil Guide to EMFs. And no, I don't always have my book on me. I'm just traveling with it because I'm going to record a podcast. And today in this short video, I just want to show you how to hunt for uh, bedroom EMFs in hotel rooms and basically uh, how to remove the sources as much as you possibly can. So here's my room. I'm in a very standard kind of type of room that you can encounter anywhere in the world. This is a hotel in Austin, Texas. And for, um, for this exercise today, I'm going to use this meter. Let me, let me put it on the bed here. This is a very improvised video. This uh, EMF meter is called the ENV or Enviro RD10. And uh, you can uh, look it up in the show notes or in the uh, description of this YouTube video. So basically, this thing, you turn it on and it has three kinds of EMFs that it can look. Look right here. And if I could zoom, you would see it a little bit better. RF, which is radio frequency EMFs. And this is the first type that we're going to hunt for. So RF is microwave radiation. Microwave radiation. That's cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. And right now I'm looking for cordless phones because oftentimes you have these wireless cordless phones that are really harsh. So let's look what the levels look like in this room. So I'm, I'm just walking around with the meter. I'm trying to find sources here. And obviously you see it going in the red range. That's no good. That's definitely not something that's gonna help me sleep. So very ironically, I'm here on the pillow and the levels are off the charts. And these EMFs, this is radio frequency, also called microwave radiation. radiation. If it's in the yellow uh, that you can see right here, or red, it means that I will not get a proper night of sleep. So this is very poor design. And this is W Hotel Austin. If you're a W Hotel, you should change your phones and have a corded phone. Uh, with no levels of EMFs and look it up because there's a second phone somehow right here and what happens once I put that close to the phone again this phone is emitting because it is it can be wireless look at that so this phone I think it might be the phone itself or is the base station so what I'll try to do is to turn off both of these phones if I can manage to or I'll wrap them in uh, aluminum paper actually that could be something um, the TV the smart TV sometimes could emit EMFs and there's actually it looks like there might be something but it might be due to the fluctuations it, it, the the smart TV sometimes have chips inside them and constantly emit so that's uh, that might be another source what have we got here look at that let me zoom for a sec. I'm horrible at this. Okay. What's that? I don't understand. Why is my alarm clock emitting these EMFs on my pillow? So on the left side, I have this bad boy. Boom. Oh my God. And on the back side, I have this dude. Hey, I'm EMF. And... On the right side, I have this dude. What's happening here? Well, this has a Bluetooth function. Here's the thing with a lot of the technology. If it has the Bluetooth capability, it will constantly emit, or most of the technology, the wireless gadgets are, are so that they emit 24 seven, just looking for a phone, right? So this Bluetooth thing is actually sending a signal throughout the room saying, hey, hey, is there a phone? Is there a phone for me? Well, I don't want you little little alarm clock, so I'm going to turn it off. So what I'm going to do after looking at this RF type of EMF, I'm going to try to turn all three sources of EMFs and that way I'll get a better night of sleep. So now let's go to the second type of EMF, the magnetic fields. So when it comes to magnetic fields, I want to go and select the second mode, LFM, so low frequency magnetic. So Let's use the second mode here, and I'll look at the second column here, which is milligauss, and I want that under two. So the good news is that overall, we're in the green zone, 
If it were uh, a really old deprecated house or building, sometimes you can find extremely high magnetic fields out, out of nowhere. It's actually, it gets a little bit higher here and you want to move this meter around, right? Because uh, I'm not sure it is single axis. So anyway, it's uh, very uh, geeky speak. But anyway, the way you want to use it is usually when it comes to magnetic fields, having it around. And the important part is the pillow. So if I'm sleeping, removing these, these thousands pillows here, uh, I want to assess what's happening on the pillow. And what's happening if I go closer to the wall. It's actually fairly low when I'll be sleeping or what is it it's uh, two bars two bars which would be 0 0.5 milligauss and this one I think is fairly accurate for magnetic fields if I switch it around a little bit I can get three bars but I'm not too concerned about magnetic fields I, I, I think that this bad boy here in the RF spectrum will give me much more trouble now let's look at the third type of EMF I want to look for and these are electrical fields. So magnetic fields, they're close to the source and they could irradiate this entire room but it would be especially concerning if it were like, uh, let's say there's a fridge on the other side of the wall, right, from my neighbor. But in a hotel it's very unlikely. So if you don't sleep near the mini fridge, there's no need to worry about that that much. So the RF sources I think were the number one concern in this room and now I want to look at electrical fields. So come with me, I'll, I'll show you a little bit the third mode of this little meter here. So bad boy ready to go. Mode number three, LFE, low frequency electric, boom. So I'm looking for these numbers. You can see that two, uh, they recommend two, uh, one bar is two volt per meter, two bars is 10 volt per meter. If it were 20 uh, or let's say 10 volt per meter right now, I would be concerned, but I don't see anything popping up. So there's no huge abnormality. Uh, but if I went close to a source like a lamp, sometimes there you go. So if I, if I touch the lamp and the, and the base, I could see these, these electrical fields go up and you can see that the lamp itself is not on. There, it, it's not on this lamp, but the electrical fields are inside the lamp because the lamp is plugged in. So if I go, let's say, let me go this side of the bed. If I go and look it up here, oh, oh, you, you see what's happening? So this guy and this lamp, this lamp is emitting EMFs like crazy. Even at one foot, I'm starting to get some. Here, it's not that much of an issue, but let's say there, there are some hot spots right here. Even around the alarm clock, I could have my head here. So it's actually worse than I thought because if uh, we look at the electronic parts near the bed, right behind me, it looks like everything has been put under the bed. And I think there's a Wi-Fi router under the bed, which is honestly the worst design I've ever seen in a hotel room. Sorry W Hotel, you, ju you just don't know this is a factor, but this is literally the worst room I've ever seen. So let's see what we can do about it. And uh, right now, let, <laughs> let me see who's in prison right now. Guys, how are you feeling? Left alone? Yeah. Now it might start to look like I've had a fight in here but I'm doing this to prove a point. The award for the worst design of an hotel room goes to this room where you have 100% of the wires, including, what is that, like a, uh, that's a power adapter. And what do we have here? It's a Wi-Fi router hidden right there, which I will close at night if I want a good night of sleep but let's say that it did require me to do some shuffling around so let's see what happens to this meter when I go near the router right here it's completely maxed out okay so now let's keep it here you see it's red this <laughs> it's actually a dramatic explanation let's see if I can turn it off 
It doesn't. What's happening? And now the beast has been silenced. I had to actually unplug everything, even the Ethernet cable, it seems somehow. So that beast was hard to tame. But now look at the levels under my head as I sleep. It's none. It's none. And I think, is this Wi-Fi? No. So let's see. Let's see if I successfully done my job here with the RD10. And while I'm uh, kind of shuffling around the battleground, it looks like there, I mean, there will still be, there's a street there. It's Austin, Texas, guys. They will still be fairly high levels, but I've essentially reduced the levels in this room by 90%. And if I go and see what these, these bad boys do, I don't think they emit anymore because they've been unplugged, but there are spikes here. So this phone probably has batteries in there and can send some signals. So this is why I'm going to keep them here and not in the bedroom area during the night. All right, guys, that's it for me. As you can see, the room is uh, fairly clean. No, I haven't destroyed it actually. And I will replace everything back in order before I leave this room. But tonight I'm going to have a better night of sleep. And I'm reducing my exposure to just needless microwave radiation that I don't need during the night. I don't need a router under my bed. Uh, so now I'm going to pop some uh, Trucy tablets. The, it's uh, H2 molecular hydrogen. Going to put that in there. Makes a little bubble. And that's the story for another day, folks. I'm Nick Pino signing out. And if you want to learn more about the electromagnetic fields, electrosmog, and the effects of might have on your health, check out the non-tinfall guide to EMS. Check out everything in the description. Appreciate you. See ya.